light and peace in Jesus Christ our Lord. Jesus said, you are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one lights a lamp to put it under a bucket, but on a lampstand where it gives light for everyone in the house. And you, like the lamp, must shed light among your fellow men so that they may see the good you do and give glory to your Father in heaven. Please join me in this opening prayer. Almighty God, we give you thanks for surrounding us as daylight fades with the brightness of the Vesper light. We implore you of your great mercy that as you enfold us with the radiance of this light, so you would shine into our hearts the brightness of your Holy Spirit through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So as Charlotte cues you, please join in singing the opening hymn. join me on this second verse.
beautiful. God bless you. Two prayers you can join me in saying together. This is uh, the day before tomorrow is Pentecost. It's the eve of Pentecost. And so we'll offer this Pentecost prayer and then go right into the next. Let us pray. Almighty God, on the day of Pentecost, you opened the way of eternal life to every race and nation by the promised gift of your Holy Spirit. Shed abroad this gift throughout the world by the preaching of the gospel, that it may reach to the ends of the earth through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. O gracious light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, now as we come to the setting of the sun, and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing your praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices, O Son of God, O giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. Amen. Please be seated.
want to bring you a word of welcome. I want to begin by welcoming the presence of God into our midst and thanking him for this most amazing and absolutely perfect weather. I also want to welcome Cyrus Chestnut and Charlotte Small. who have both amazing musical talent and faith in the Lord that have already begun to inspire us in praise to God. And I want to welcome back to Gladstone, Pastor Harvey Carey. It is so good to see you again. And with Harvey are some members of his church, Citadel of Faith in Detroit. Uh, who we have the partnership, the Zoom calls with between our two churches twice a month. Welcome to James and Glenda, Chuck and Laura, and James, welcome. So great to have you. It's like a family reunion. It feels like it. And I want to say to everyone here, thank you for accepting God's invitation for coming this, to this evening of jazz and prayer. I say it that way because sometimes, you know, we're unaware of how God is working within us. People say it this way. They say things happen for a reason, or they say our God works in mysterious ways. And I'd like to suggest to you that you're here tonight for a reason. God made you aware of this event in some way. God enabled you to be here. And something within you, perhaps it was the Spirit of God, prompted you to come, and so you responded. God was in it. Welcome to everyone. Glad you are here. God is not just blessing St. Luke's Church this evening, but this community of PPAC and Gladstone. God has brought us all together in this place. Cyrus and Charlotte, Harvey and members of Citadel, members of St. Luke's, friends and visitors. God has brought us together this day. This is so clearly an event that God has orchestrated through and through. So you might have wondered, how is it that we came to have Cyrus Chestnut playing Jazz Vespers with us? God moves in mysterious ways. And so there I was in November on a day off tinkering on the piano. And I have been to live jazz before. Uh, but for some reason, as I was tinkering back in November, this really strong feeling came over me in a way that I have never before felt to go, I really, really wanted to go and hear live jazz. And I remembered before the pandemic, we used to go up to Shanghai Jazz up in Madison. So I pulled out my phone and I saw who was playing. There's a quartet of people, it looked really good. And so I said to Joy, my wife, let's go. I called and it's a dinner thing. I don't know if you've ever been there. It's a dinner, they have two seatings. First seating, of course, was full, so it was the second seating. We're driving up to Morristown, well, Madison, and I said to Joy, you know, it's really late. We're getting too old for this. You know, we're not even going to be eating dinner until 9 o'clock <laughs> at night. What are we doing? You know, this is crazy. And we get there, and the music was fabulous. The dinner was fabulous. And then here's what happened. The horns, the band stepped away, and Cyrus Chestnut started playing Hello by Lionel Richie. And it was the most amazing arrangement of that song I could ever imagine. I was literally blown away. And so what I did, of course, is I took out my phone. And I said, I wonder if he's recorded this. And I went on Amazon Music. And I put in Cyrus Chestnut. And what came up, to my surprise, because I didn't know this about him before, were all these hymns that he has recorded. And I don't know how to tell you this, but it was like a light bulb. It was like a lightning bolt in that moment. I knew in my spirit why we were at the jazz club that night. I said to Joy, I know why we're here. And it was because I believe God sent me there to make this connection with Cyrus Chestnut. So I went up to him afterwards, and such a gracious man. And I <laughs> said to him, you know, um, I'm a pastor down there in Gladstone, and uh, would you ever consider coming and doing Jazz Vespers? And he said, I do that sort of thing all the time. I go, wow, that's great. I said, you know, where are you based? In New Jersey. Turns out he's, you know, less than an hour away from us. And uh, so I gave him my card, and he said, you will definitely hear from me. And so 
I tell you that story because I want to say that God can use all kinds of mysterious ways to guide us, direct us, and speak to us. And tonight, we are here because God used jazz to bring us together. And I love jazz, and I love the Lord, and I am so glad that you, I'm on the verge of tears. This is so exciting to me. I am glad that you are here this evening to join us in this time of worship. God bless you.
Thank you very much. Um, I'm not much on talking. I like to. I, I prefer to l have the music tell my story. But I do know inqui inquiring minds want to know. <laughs> <laughs> um, I live in the realm, in the room of improvisation. 
And I like to think of improvisation as spontaneous composition. So what you are hearing in this moment are just designed for your ears and your ears now. And I guess for those who are streaming too, hey, how y'all doing? <laughs> this will not ever happen again. And I think that's the greatest magic about improvisation and th that, that engine in the freedom that uh, jazz gives one to be able to simply create, to be led of the spirit and to go and just go on the ride, you know. Um, we ha have piano and I, we have little arguments from time to time. You know, spirit, well, spirit says, go here. I said, no, no, uh-uh, no, I can't do that. Do you trust me? Well, yeah, then do what I tell you. And so there we go. What you are hearing, trust me, if I was to do this program again, it would not sound this way. I don't think you would want it to sound that way. Anyway, um, Hello was the first piece. Uh, and I thought about it. I was like, well, usually when I do jazz vespers, I'm more in, I like to take hymns and twist them around. And so um, when uh, Kent said, uh, I want you to play Hello. I'm like, huh? And I just thought about it. I says, okay, why why not, you know? Um, all I can do is put the notes out in the atmosphere and allow God to sanctify them, send it back to you. And it's my sincere desire just to be a conduit of blessing. Uh, the last piece, I think you all, most of you, hopefully you all recognize it. Um, Jesus loves me. This, I know, is maybe a little different twist. And I'd like to do one more. Um, in this beautiful place, as I walked in, just to be led by the Spirit, uh, a beautiful garden. So I'd like to kind of do a spinoff on I Come to the Garden Loan. Hope you enjoy.
Scripture reading this evening, Psalm 150. Hallelujah. Praise God in his holy house of worship. Praise him under the open skies. Praise him for his acts of power. Praise him for his magnificent greatness. Praise him with a blast on the trumpet. Praise him with strumming soft strings. Praise him with castanets and dance. Praise him with banjo and flute. Praise him with the cymbals and with a big brace drum. Praise him with fiddles and mandolin. Let every living, breathing creature praise God. Hallelujah. It's the word of the Lord.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we give Jesus praise? What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. This is the day the Lord has made. We rejoice and we are glad in it. I mean, listen, I believe God answers prayer, but I, I play, prayed a specific prayer. I hate the summer. I hate it. Um, and uh, I hate it for several reasons. Number one, I hate sweating. Um, I hate bugs. Um, and so I said to the Lord, now, Lord, we're doing this outdoor service now, and you know, you know me, I'm, I'm, and I'm dark-skinned, and so uh, when the light hits me, it reflects, and they're going to get blinded, and I just need, I need you to make it low humidity, I need you to make it cool, and I need you to make the day in like the 80s, anyway, God heard our prayer, and we're so grateful, amen. So glad to be back here at St. Luke's, so grateful for our Brother Chestnut and Sister Small, and again, what gifts they are to the kingdom. To my brother, my friend, Kent, and to Joy, we're so grateful to be back with the both of you and so grateful for the partnership that both St. Luke and Citadel has been sharing over these past several months. Uh, it has been life transforming for all of us. And so we're so grateful for the relationship uh, that forged accidentally. Uh, many of you may know that I, I was speaking at a conference, Kent heard me and said, hey, listen, let's see if we can bring him out for Pentecost uh, weekend uh, with the Alpha team in particular. And so. Uh, right before the pandemic hit. I was the last plane out of New York, by the way, before they shut it down. Uh, so in March of 2020, I was the last flight out of the East Coast before they said nobody else can leave. So uh, I don't know if y'all were trying to keep me or what, but uh, I'm back again. And so we're so grateful for what the Word of God, I believe, will bring to us tonight. Let's pray as we allow God's Word to speak to us. God, thank you for the music that's been lifted. Thank you that you are in all of creation, in the breeze that we feel, in the sounds of the birds that are chirping, in the beautiful music that's been rendered. But God, we also thank you that you've revealed yourself through your word. Your word is a, it's a lamp to our feet. It's a light on our path. We cannot stumble, and we cannot be unsure about which way we go when your word directs us. So in these next few moments, would you speak to us? Would you allow your word to remind us what you desire of us? And in the end, God, we pray that you will get all the praise and that you will get all the glory because it's in the name of the one who deserves it that we pray. In the mighty and the matchless name of Jesus, we pray. And all that agree with it said amen and amen. So I want to share with you all out of the book of Psalms, actually uh, not just the scripture that was just read, but another scripture that is uh, quite kind of close to it in the 19th. Uh, uh, division of Psalms, uh, beginning at verse 1 through 5. And so I want you to hear these words. It says, the heavens proclaim the glory of God. The skies display his craftsmanship. Day after day, they continue to speak. Night after night, they make him known. They speak without a sound or word. Their voice is never heard. Yet their message has gone throughout the earth and their words to all the world. God has made a home in the heavens for the sun. It bursts forth like a radiant bridegroom after his wedding. It rejoices like a great athlete eager. Praise God in his holy house of worship. Praise him under the open skies. Praise him for his acts of power. Praise him for his magnificent greatness. Praise him with the blast on the trumpet Praise him by the strummings of soft strings. Praise him with castanets and dance. Praise him with banjo and flute. Praise him with cymbal and big bass bass drum. Praise him with fiddles and mandolin. Let every living, breathing creature praise God. Hallelujah. I want to just talk from the subject tonight, a God who desires praise. A God who desires praise. Uh, I met my wife in high school, and it was love at first sight. She saw me, she loved me. <laughs> um, and anyway, uh, uh, out of all the years, I've learned one thing, that it is so important sometimes to give credit where credit is due, and to give appropriate praise when it's warranted, right? Uh, when someone does something great, when my wife prepares something, when she does something, I say, honey, what a great job. Uh, you look really nice today. Everybody desires praise, right? Uh, but you all, what do you give to someone who has everything? Have you ever had that question? Uh, maybe during the holidays, Father's Day is coming up. Uh, Mother's Day, you guys get so much extra stuff, by the way. Uh, 
Uh, but, but, you know, what do you do? What do you do for the person when you kind of go through your list of what you've gotten them throughout the years and you're trying to decide, so what do you give to somebody who has it all? Uh, and, and as it relates to praise or appreciation, how do you give that to God? How do, you, how do you thank God appropriately for all the things that he has done, but not just what he's done, but for who he is? Well, the scripture gives us some ideas about how uh, God receives praise. In and, and the Psalms uh, 19 text, he says that uh, the heavens themselves, creation, actually gives praise to God. Without any words being spoken, without anything being, being audibly communicated through words, uh, just the very creation itself speaks of the splendor and the worthiness of God, and it gives him praise. And it says, though their voice is never heard, they speak, and yet their message is gone throughout the whole earth. Everybody in the whole world hears God being praised by creation. And I don't know about you, but creation is an awesome reflection of God, isn't it? You may not be inside of a church chapel. You may not uh, have the uh, resources maybe to go to one of the wonders of the world, but you can look out of your window and, and stare in awe at the beauty of God. Whether it's a tree, whether it's grass budding up through the, the, the earth, whether it's a, a beautiful bird singing a song, whether it's uh, the sound of water rushing by a brook. I mean, all of those things just remind us of the awesomeness and the magnificence of God. And so God says, creation indeed praises me. It doesn't strive to do it. It just does it. It doesn't fight to do it. It just does it. Indeed, all of creation praises him. And here's the question. Uh, he says, well, if creation can praise me, I wonder what the people that I've made, what they will do. Well, in Psalms 150, he says, hallelujah. That's the highest praise that we can render to God. It says, hallelujah, praise God uh, in the holy house of worship. So he says, one of the places that we can praise God are in these houses God at home. He says, but places that have been set aside for worship, set aside for the gathered community. He says, praise God in these houses of worship. But then he says, uh, for those who might feel like, why are we having church outside? That, that doesn't seem appropriate. He says, well, praise him under the open skies. So for all of the skeptics that wonder, well, is this appropriate for worship? Uh, the scripture says not only are we to praise him in buildings, but we also can praise him under the open skies. And here's the thing where it gets become more personal. He then goes into reasons that we should praise him. And you all, if you don't know, I get a little loud and a little excited and you'll be just uh, get one more day of me and you'll be done. Uh, <laughs> And you all, and so he says, I, I need for those of you who have got to build a case as to why you should be like creation. Why you should be like the world that I've made that doesn't strive to thank me, that doesn't fight to worship me, that doesn't fight to praise me. Let me kind of call the role, and maybe as I call the role, maybe give you some reasons to give praise as well. I know right now that there are people that are listening both in person and that are streaming online who are going through some dark and difficult times. How do you praise God when you've lost a loved one? How do you give God glory when there's an illness that is right upon you or maybe someone that you love is suffering from that? How do we give God praise when our world is war-torn, when there seems to be division and strife at every corner? How do we give God praise when we can't push one bill across the table? How do we give God praise when it seems that there's more negativity than positivity? And we want to know, well, God, could you give me a reason? Could you give me some kind of an idea as to, as to how to do this and why I should? He says, I'm glad that you asked. First of all, praise him. And I love this scripture. Praise him for his acts of power. He says, one of the reasons that we will give God praise is because he has done powerful things in our lives. Several years ago, I was severely ill, and I was sent home uh, after being in the hospital for about four or five months, and I was sent home on hospice. The doctor said, there was nothing that you can do, we can do anymore, and so we're giving you a feeding tube, and that's the end of the story for you. And so, several months go by, I'm being fed by a tube, I'm down to about 80 pounds with no hope of recovery. But God said, I'm calling you to Detroit, Michigan to start a church. He told me that before I got sick. So my pastor was meeting with my, uh, my wife in the living room talking about my funeral. I'm like, at least don't let me hear you talk about it. I mean, there's, there's other rooms. Uh, and, and so I heard uh, her, him say, well, we've rented a building. 
uh, for several uh, weeks because we love Harvey and we know that he's going to be transitioning and we want to make sure that all the church can be there. She said, Harvey's not going to die. Uh, he said, well, you know, part of the whole grief thing is denial. That's the first step in this whole piece. And we know that that's probably what she said. No, no, it has nothing to do with that. God called my husband in college to start a church in Detroit. We're not in Detroit. So either God lied or he's not going to die. He leaves because he couldn't argue with that. The bottom line is that a few uh, weeks later, God says to me, get up and go get something to eat. Now, I am on a feeding tube. My muscles have now deteriorated. As a matter of fact, they're in atrophy. Even if I did find the strength to get up, I would have probably had to go through physical therapy just to move. But when God gives a word, he also gives power to do the word that he gives. And so I disconnected myself from the feeding machine, went to the kitchen to get something to eat, and now I'm trying to go on a diet. What is the point? The power of God is real. And you all, I want to say to you, those of us that have selective amnesia, we keep forgetting the things we should remember and remembering the stuff we should forget. How many of you remember when you were backed against the wall? How many of you all remember when times were so difficult or you had an impossibility, but God, by his mighty act of power, showed up? He made a way out of no way. He did a miraculous thing. And he says, if then you need a reason to praise me, remember when I opened the door. Remember when I turned it around. Remember when I made a way out of no way. Then give me praise for my acts of power. And I'm just wondering in today, is there anybody that remembers how God has shown up? But secondly, he says, praise him for his magnificent greatness. Sometimes, you all, we don't need to praise him for what he does but we but we praise him for who he is if we only praise him for what he does then that praise becomes conditional if God does something then I'll bless him if God is kind to me then I'll be kind to him but what happens when you go through those drought seasons right where it's sometimes hard to trace the the hand of God he says well I need you to do this then I need you to just give me praise because of my greatness and not just my greatness but my magnificent greatness that means if I never do anything else for you, if I never open another door, if I never knew a, do another great uh, act of power for you, are you willing to give me glory just for who I am? And you all, because he is king of kings, because he is Lord of lords, because he is a sovereign God, because he sits high and he looks low, because all power of heaven and earth is in his hand, he deserves the praise. Whether he does anything for us or not, he deserves the praise for his magnificent greatness. Isn't he a great God? <laughs> Amen. Now you all, for the next day or so, y'all going to be uh, Baptist by default. Uh, <laughs> And so for all y'all who are real quiet, just get, get, get that out the way. It's not going to work. Uh, uh, make a joyful noise, all right? So, so he says, uh, praise him then for his magnificent greatness. So he tells us, these are the two reasons I want you to use. I want you to look back over your life and look in the world around you. And have you seen my power manifested? And secondly, can you choose to praise me even if you can't trace me? Can you praise me for my greatness? But then he goes into this litany. He says, well, let me give you another example. All of creation praises, but also music praises. You are one great uh, kind of equalizer is both beauty of nature and music. Anywhere in the world, you'll find people going to a park, going to an oceanside or seaside scene, because everybody, wherever they are on the globe, are drawn to the magnificence and the beauty and the God in creation. But the same thing happens with music, isn't it? Even if you don't understand the language. I mean, same with opera. I mean, opera, my goodness. I, I mean, I, I go to, I went to, an, listen, in Detroit, they had a Malcolm X opera. A few days ago, they had a Malcolm X. I'm like, a Malcolm X? Those things don't seem like they go together, Malcolm X and opera. But it did. And here's the point. No matter if you don't understand the language, in opera, you feel the emotion, Right? The way that they set the stage and the way that they sound and the notes that they use and the tones that they use create an emotion. He says, so 
Not only can you find God in creation, but you also can find God in music. And that is why God has reached so many people globally through music. He says, praise him then with blasting the trumpet. Praise him by strumming the soft strings. Praise him with dancing. Praise him with the guitar or the banjo or the flute. Praise him with cymbals and with the bass drum, with the fiddles and the mandolin. He says, listen, let's find every musical instrument that you can and put them together and render a praise to me because those instruments, although different in their tones, different in their functions, when they come together, they make a melodious sound that connects and everybody in the world can hear it. And imagine what that means for the church. What, imagine what that means for the Christian community. And for those that are listening, I'm so glad we're outside so you can hear us. I hope we're not being too loud, but we're going to be loud just about another five minutes. For those of you that wonder why uh, is the church so divided and why are people so divided and why does this person worship this way and why is this person quiet in their worship and why is this person loud in their worship and why does one place have a pipe organ and why does one other place have a bass drum and why does one person do it this way and the other? Can I tell you why? Because the same way that God has diversity in instrumentation, he also has diversity in creation. God has not made us to play the same note. He's not played, made us to play the same sound. He's not created us to worship him the same way. If there's a bass drum worshiping with loud bass stuff, it's not the same as the flute. So don't hate on the bass because you're a flute. <laughs> Amen. And, and so listen, God wants to show the world that there's not just one kind of Christian. Hallelujah. There's not just one kind of church. There's not just one kind of believer. But there's all different kinds of us. There's introverts. There's extroverts. There's high intellectuals and there's some of us that are a little challenged. There's, there's, there's some people that are, that are extremely uh, retrospective and introspective. There are those that are more experiential. There's some that are loud. And there's some that may not be so loud. But God says, I've created all of them. I've created all of them. I've created everything to give me praise. And so he ends with these words. Let every living, breathing creature praise God. So the final thing he says, for those who need reasons to praise me, let me give them to you. For those that want some examples of the diversity of ways in which it sounds to me, I'll show you. But then let me give you one final admonition. The way to qualify yourself, well, am, am I one that would be considered uh, 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 an entity or a person that would praise? He says, are you breathing? That's it. He says, let everything that has breath praise God. And so if you're breathing right now, God's invitation to you is to give him praise. Right now, I promise you, every circumstance is saying, don't do it. Every situation is saying, be pessimistic. Everything that you see on television, everything that you're hearing in your family, everything that you're dealing with your grandkids, everything around you is saying, shut down your praise. But I came to tell you that when you praise God, you know what you're doing. I'm done. You bring God into the scene. When you, when you lift up the problems, you lift up the enemy. When you lift up the negativity, you lift up the enemy. When you lift up the division around us, you lift up the enemy. Oh, but if I be lifted up, Jesus said, from the earth, I will draw all men unto myself. And how does he do it? When you are loud. But I am saying that you do have to praise. Praise may not be loud, but praise does need to be real. And that means that you need to form something on your lips that says, hallelujah. He says, let everything that prays, that breathes, praise God. Then he says, hallelujah. That's the highest praise that these earthen lips can give to a holy God. And so I don't know who you are. I don't know where you are on your journey, but let everything that has breath 
give God praise because if the birds and the skies and the trees and nature can praise him, if instruments can praise him, I don't know about you, I don't want a rock crying out for me. I want to know that I can give God praise because he's done mighty acts for me. I can give God praise because he is wondrous in his personality. I can give God praise because the instruments declare his very glory, but I also can give God praise because I've got breath in my body. And as long as I've got breath in my body, I'm going to give him the highest praise. So I'm going to give you an opportunity right now for some of y'all who've never ever done this like, oh, I'm getting ready to say something in church. Yes! (laughs) Oh, Harvey, you're really pushing the limits now. Well, get used to it. It's going to be a long weekend. God wants you to give him praise. I'm not going to say how to do it. I don't think it's my right. It's not my responsibility to say how to do it. Now, if he's done nothing for you, don't do anything. No wondrous acts, no praise worthy. If you find yourself saying, you know what, I'm not sure if you're that magnificent or great, then don't do it. I'm not sure if I'm breathing. (laughs) But if you're breathing, if you know that he's magnificently great, and if you can look back over your life and know that there's been some powerful acts of, of, of God in your life, then the Bible says that everything that is breathing, say hallelujah and praise God. So as we get, so would you just in your own way right now, just give God, and listen, you all, I know we're outside, but they planned a weekend. There's going to be a, a big outside kind of situation this weekend. They moved it, right? Isn't that amazing? But can I tell you what I know what's going to happen? It was not going to be quiet. They were not going to have a, a big DJ and be like, okay, here's the DJ now. Be quiet. When they had whatever they're going to have, it was going to be, the, the, the town was going to hear it. So here's my question. Will the town know that we even had a jazz vespers other than the piano? Are we gonna let this piano stand in the way of your praise? Cause this piano doesn't know that you had cancer but you're still here. This, pi- this piano doesn't know that your grandchild was wayward but God brought him back home. You have a testimony that a piano does not have. So we're not gonna let Cyrus be able to be the only one that gives God the glory on those keyboards. We want you to open your mouth and give him a praise. So when I count to three, I want you as loud as you can. I mean, in Newark, let them hear it. I want in Times Square. What was that noise? I want, I don't know where. It went. I want you to open your mouth as loud as you can. Think about the goodness of God. Think about the miracles of God. Think about the open doors of God. Think about the way that God has shown up. Think about who He is and give Him the greatest praise you can give. Are you ready to do that? Isn't He worthy of it, you all? Now, for some of y'all that don't think this is appropriate, I promise you it is. Because no team that you're, that you're screaming for has ever healed you. <laughs> Way to go, Giants! Yeah, whatever. <laughs> but when you think about Jesus and what he's done for you, if you can get loud at a game, then you can definitely get loud for a God who is healed and who is on the throne and who's a mighty, mighty Savior. Amen? So let the redeemed of the Lord get ready to say so. Are you ready? So when I count to three, let them hear it all the way in New York. When I count to three, one, two, three, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. God, you're holy. God, you're worthy. God, you're awesome. God, you are almighty. Nobody like you. You're an open door. You open doors. You change situations. And we give you the praise.
So uh, those of you who are Episcopalians know that we often say, Lord, in your mercy, and then we say, hear our prayer. The response is, hear us, Lord, which is kind of like what amen means, so be it. Hear us, Lord. So hopefully this will get you thinking about, yes, that is what I agree with. So I do invite you uh, to stand. And as uh, each petition is offered at the end of it, I will say, Lord, in your mercy, and invite your amen to be, hear us, Lord. Let us come before the Lord in prayer. Come, Holy Spirit, and be present to each person here today. Come and be present to each person watching us today. Touch our hearts in just the way you know we need. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, this land in which we live is torn with division, with bitterness. Would you heal our land? Would you heal our people? Would you make us one? Lord, in your mercy. Government. In these times, O oh God, bring peace. Lord, in your mercy. Yes, Lord. Lord, we pray for the sick. We pray for the suffering. We pray for those in need. We pray for those in our families who are in need in this very moment. Even the names in which we, we name now, I feel free to name names of those on your heart. Lord Jesus, you're the great physician. Bring healing. Lord, in your mercy. And Lord, may we always be drawn to resound in praise for you are worthy of praise with every breath we give let us give praise to you lord in your mercy yes, amen the peace of the lord be always with you. with you i encourage you to take a moment and greet those around you with god's peace Thank you. You can be seated. I'll just be brief, but I just need to say a few things of thankfulness. I am so thankful to several uh, persons. The first person I am thankful to is God, who orchestrated this. And Okay, tell me, what are the odds, really, of zero per thank you, God? And I want to say a special thank you to Cyrus and to Charlotte. Thank you so much for blessing us. And to Harvey, you can be loud here anytime you want. I just, have, I just have to say what you see right there with those three individuals who are people who have been blessed by God and who are giving that back to God. Thank you for your example of that. So there were a lot of details that had to be coordinated to make all this happen. And uh, the people of St. Luke's have really stepped up for this weekend and have so blessed me. And I stand in awe, really, of all of you. I thank you so much. And I especially want to say Tammy Riley, who is coordinating all of the things for today. Thank you, Tammy. Thank you, Tracy Piran and members of the Parish Life Guild all who helped and volunteered for today. We had a wonderful welcome event last night that was coordinated by Julie Sweta and our Alpha team, thank you. <laughs> Michelle Logan, Marcella Holmes, thank you for your hospitality this weekend for our guests. And this event is coordinated, it's been partnered with, thanks to all those folks, it's being partnered with several businesses in town who have donated things like food and other things. They are listed in your program. 
Uh, Gladstone Market did a great job for us last night. You're about to have some free food from uh, Cafe Azuro uh, as well as the Gladstone Tavern um, and all of the organizations in town, the businesses in town that sponsored this event are listed there in your program and I want to say a special thank you to them. Uh, you can meet Cyrus Chestnut after this service, and he has some CDs as well. Uh, he could sign those for you if you'd like and sell them to you, and so I encourage you to do so. We'll be inside there through these doors where there also will be uh, refreshments that I just spoke about. And uh, the last thing I'm going to say is uh, as we go into uh, one of our final musical pieces here, uh, we are going to pass some baskets around, and it's an don't feel any obligation whatsoever. But it is an opportunity for you to give back and to express thanks. And what those funds are going to go for is specifically our music fund, which allows us to do these kinds of events. So if God puts it on your heart and you so desire, you can make a donation uh, to St. Luke's Church for the uh, music fund for these events. And again, thank you all for coming out. So this will be a time of music while we receive an offering. <laughs> Please stand and join me in these closing prayers. We begin by saying together the prayer our Lord Jesus Christ taught us in whatever words you say it. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Saying together, O God, the King Eternal, whose light divides the day from the night and turns the shadow of death into the morning, drive far from us all wrong desires, incline our hearts to keep your law, and guide our feet into the way of peace, that having done your will with cheerfulness during the day, we may, when night comes, rejoice to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Look down, O Lord, from your heavenly throne, and illumine this night with your celestial brightness, that by night as by day your people may glorify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross, that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit, that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you, for the honor of your name. Amen. Thank <laughs> you. 
I just wanted to go on forever. But what occurs to me is it will go on to ever be, uh, forever because what this is is just a little piece of heaven that we have experienced together tonight. I really think this is what heaven will be like. People using their gifts, coming together and praising the Lord in joyful, joyful. Charlotte Small. <laughs> Barbie Carey. Okay, this may not be appropriate to say in church, but I just was thinking, Charlotte, at the end of that song, you should have dropped the mic. <laughs> but then, but then I was thinking... You know, how can Cyrus drop the piano? Because that's sort of what, what he would need to do. But all right, so let me uh, close us out, and I'm going to invite you to be seated for the post loop. But now, may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of God and his Son, 
our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day. Remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Please be seated for the post loop.
Please join us for refreshments right through there.